Hey everybody, it's Eddie J on Crypto for GrowMyBag.tv. There is so much going on, I obviously could not fit in into the Crypto Minute. Sorry about that, but let's talk big, big, big news. The big news is, I just want to get the numbers right this morning, Bitcoin is at $71,629 and Ethereum is above $4,000 at $4,027. Now, we did hit last week, I said we would hit 70,000 last week and we did hit it, that's great, but we didn't sustain, it was like beep, and that was it, it was like three seconds. Um, Mona texted me and she was like, oh my God, we hit over 70,000. Yep, we did, but it didn't sustain. Went to bed last night, Bitcoin was in a good place to for a nice little pop, and here you go at a new all time high above 71,000. But something that I keep telling people not to sleep on is Ethereum. Ethereum is number two and it's number two for a reason. It's coming in with a hot bullet and at above $4,000. Ethereum had, excuse me, Ethereum has a habit with everything that's going on on that network to just pop up and just pop up and pop up. Pay attention to the year to date percentage between Ethereum and Bitcoin. And you'll see that Ethereum sometimes takes off faster than Bitcoin. They both move, you know, almost, you know, hand in hand, but I'm telling you, don't sleep on Ethereum. Something else I'm telling you, you know what, we'll get into numbers later. Let's hit the news. I'm sorry about that. So phishing scams are up 47, well not up, but hit $47 million just last month, just in February, $47 million. People, please take a hold of what you're doing. Make sure that everything that you do is in a secure fashion. Know that what you're reaching out to is exactly where you need to be. And please stop clicking links. Stop clicking links. If you receive an email with a link in it, you better be real sure that it's coming from where you're expecting it to come from. Hover your mouse over that link to make sure that it's exactly where it's from. Because there are um, there are language sets, other, if you're in the United States, there are language sets that look like it's English and they're not. So an A can look like an A, but it's not actually an A, and you wind up at another site. And trust me, they will spend the time, they will spend the money to make that site look exactly like the way you think it should look, and then all of a sudden, you're at a phishing site. So try to originate things from your side. You wanna go to a website that you know? Start from your side to go there. Don't use the link in the email. Phishing scams are getting hot. Next up, Vitalik Buterin says that there are quant there is a quantum you know there are quantum threats to Ethereum and that he's got a game plan to address them. That's actually a very big deal because it, it sounds scary, but that's not here yet. You know what I mean? Like those quantum threats are not really here yet. It would take a lot to pull it off. And what he's doing is saying, yeah, I I understand that, and me and the team are working to solve that. That's huge. One of the reasons why I, I keep telling people, as you continue looking across other networks, one of the things that I like about Ethereum is Vitalik Buterin and his team. That whole team. They're doing crazy stuff over there. That's another reason why I like Cardano. Because I can look at those lead developers, Shiba Inu, same thing. I, I can just look at those lead developers and see what's going on in their heads. And they're thinking so far ahead, so far ahead. This is what gives me trust in those networks, trust in those blockchains. That's why, that's why I mess with them. That's why I have bags. Just saying. I'm not loaded, working on it. Um, but, you know... I pay attention to all that research and all that, all those opportunities, and that's what I go after, right? Um, something else to pay attention to. Now, I, I look at numbers every so often, and I think, you know, just what are these people thinking? Well, Alex Kruger is a big time economist. He's very well known, very good at what he does. And he's saying, here's what he expects over the next little while when it comes to Bitcoin. He thinks that it's going to surge to 85,000. And this is all before the halving. It's going to surge to 85,000, then have a 35% pullback. That's highly possible. But I want you to think about that. What, what would happen in that pullback. I think that there are factors now that 
can't necessarily be applied to what the future is going to bring. So if I was sitting down having a cup of coffee with Alex Kruger, I really like that guy. He's like mad smart, but love to learn from him. If I was having a cup of coffee with him, I would say, but I understand what you're what you're saying, but let's look, let's let's adjust the table a little bit. You have mud wrecks in India, mud wrecks, mud wrecks. I don't know. Sorry about the mispronunciation, but you have this company in India that's going to introduce U.S. Bitcoin spot ETFs to India. Not everybody there is dirt poor. A lot of people there actually have money. So and even if they were poor, imagine you'd be able to take your rupees and still put it in the bit, still put it into this Bitcoin spot ETF and possibly make money. Doesn't that expand the growth opportunity there? So I can understand what he's saying with the with the growth to eighty five percent and then a pullback. I just disagree with the amount of the pullback. There's always going to be a FOMO in, right? There's going to be a pop, then a FOMO, then profit taking. I just don't know that thirty five percent is going to equate to that profit taking. I, I just don't. I don't know just yet. In that vein, you also have, you know. Bitcoin uh, spot ETF from spot ETF from BlackRock, the IBIT, surpassing MicroStrategy. Tell me that's not huge. Just look at how fast that was, and it shouldn't be surprising, right? MicroStrategy is one company. They don't manage money other than their own. That's all they do. BlackRock has way i mean we're talking trillions of dollars in assets under management trillions right so when you look at blackrock they're coming with all those people all those institutions behind them being able to have that kind of buying power is ridiculous so of course they're going to surpass micro strategy i'm waiting for uh fidelity to do the same just waiting just waiting but that that move also does validate micro strategy doesn't it Everybody who looks at MicroStrategy and goes, oh, my God, look at what they're doing. Everybody thought Michael Saylor was nuts. Not people like me. This guy was doing the right thing, and it's paying off big time. But he's not going to sell. Um, it's possible for people inside uh, Fidelity and and uh, BlackRock and the other the other uh, Bitcoin spot ETFs to you know buy some, see the see the huge upward you know huge upward momentum, and then sell a little, take some off the off the table. I get it. I just don't know if it's going to be 35%. I just, oh, I, mm, it seems high. It just seems high to me when you have all of this adoption. I think this bull run is going to be absolutely different than the rest of them in that it's coming with adoption. It's not just a bull run for the sake of a normal bull run. You know, the numbers play out and a little bit of people get in. No, you've got spot ETFs there. You have all kinds of mass usage from an institutional perspective on using blockchain tech, especially crypto, right? Cardano, for example, is now going to be leveraged by Dubai to revolutionize investigations. That's huge. I never would have thought about that. And I'm sitting back and I'm going, holy moly. Imagine tracking evidence like that, all that stuff. Just there's a lot that goes on there. And I'm sitting back and I'm going, wow. Wow. So that's big. So I'm pretty sure that other, you know, other agencies, other you know, law enforcement agencies are thinking about, you know, how they might be able to leverage blockchain in that same kind of fashion. But now do you see what I'm talking about when it comes to adoption? Now you're starting to see, right? You're starting to see the creative ways that people are actually leveraging or contemplating leveraging blockchain technology, specifically, you know, blockchains that move fast, are secure and have damn near 100 percent uptime. That's what I'm talking about. Then I'm turning around and I'm looking at BRICS Alliance. <laughs> The BRICS alliance cracks me up. It cracks me up because China's not doing so well economically. Russia obviously is not doing so well economically. China went and found a way to devalue uh, the ruble, the Russian ruble coming into the country for their goods and services, making their ruble worth less and making the products that they're selling worth more. That's a huge hit to Russia. 
but Russia doesn't have any place else to turn, so there you go. So do I see at some point Russia and China not getting along? Yeah, I do. I really do. So that to me, the BRICS alliance creating some kind of blockchain payment system, yeah, yeah. But if you've noticed, since the creation of BRICS, you had, oh, all these countries are banding together to drop the dollar and blah, blah, blah. Eventually, yes, they're going to drop the dollar. That's going to happen. It's going to happen anytime soon. Is it going to happen soon enough that it's actually going to matter? Why do you ask? Well, I ask because, and then there's crypto. So are you going to remove yourself from the U from dependence on the U.S. dollar faster than crypto is going to be leveraged around the world? That's the big question. And I think the answer is no, you're not. So when I look at BRICS, I'm looking at BRICS from a oh, good try, but I don't know. Maybe you should have started this in, I don't know, 1990. Right. But starting it now with the way Bitcoin is going with the way, you know, just blockchain in general and the cryptos are going now and how they're being used, how they're being leveraged. Fractional real estate, fractional stocks, the normal transactions, normal data, you know, daily transactions, cross border transactions with other courses. You just have supply chain management with coins like V chain. Just so what are you going to do? Just. Uh, that, mm, that's what I mean. Our contracts can happen, make something happen like this automatically. Bam, 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 bam. The efficiency of it all. The efficiency of it all. Just saying. That's that's what I'm looking at. You know, and then you have uh, just I'm looking at how Bitcoin has risen to surpass silver's market cap. Now, it did it before when it hit that 70, it did it before. Then it immediately dropped down. But this time it seems a lot more significant, a lot more significant. It's not just hovering. It didn't just blip on to 70 and drop. It passed 70, hit 71, starting to taste 72. Will it pull back? Of course it will. Of course it will. But to surpass silver's market cap, and then people were like, oh, it'll never happen, never happen to gold. Okay, people thought, also thought it wouldn't happen to silver. What was it? Last week, Mark Cuban was on television talking about, he was on, doing an interview for his, for his drug company. And he said, yeah, I'm buying Bitcoin, not gold. So that's huge. That's huger than huge. So if you're paying attention to things that are going on out there, this is where we're at. All right. Now, you know what we should do? We should get into the numbers. Pull that. Push that. All righty. So, like I said, this week is a kind of a big economic week. We've got um, core CPI, consumer price index coming up. Then you have producer price index coming up. So that's Tuesday and Thursday, respectively. And we should be paying attention to that. I'm looking for a hot market. I'm not looking for um, any changes. I was speaking with one of my friends last night. It's like a brother to me, Elliot. Um, speaking with him last night, and I said, I'm not expecting jack to happen in terms of um, interest rate you know, drops from the U.S. government until like June, July time frame. I think that'll be the soonest. Why? Election time election time and not for nothing he said i don't really want to react fast to pulling back right because that would spur heat in the economy so he's not he's not just playing he's not playing political games he's doing it by math mathematically he's like yeah i'm, yeah, I'm gonna hold off for as long as i can the economy's hot enough as it is right now yes even with all of the you know all of the layoffs and things like that because as soon as that happens, excuse me, as soon as he drops those rates, the economy is going to just be on fire. So that's what I'm paying attention to. 82 is the number for the fear and greed index. Huge. Just pay attention. Huge. It's not it's not where it was before. I think we hit we hit way high before, but 
looking at 82, not a bad number. Real number I'm really liking right now, total value locked, 128 billion. Over 128.5 billion. I like that number. Now, looking at, you know, Bitcoin going up. Remember what I told you? We seem to do this whole, I look back here a little bit. Let me see if I can pull this over. We kind of do, we've kind of been doing this kind of stair step thing. We hit a new, we hit a new area. We go lateral for a little while. We pop up. We hit a new area. We go lateral for a little while. We pop up. This is the shortest lateral that I've seen right here within this blue band. Down here, it did the same. It was, it was, you know, a longer period of time going, moving laterally. But this blue band right here is like real fast. We just blew by it. Then we, you know, we're approaching the new band, which would be my green band. But in between those bands, we went, we just kept going up. There seemed to just be an upward momentum. You could draw a line right here from that point to this point and just see that it was just, just going to go up. And that's why I keep looking at what kind of a pullback could there be? Would it be a big pullback? And something else I wanted to point out about that 35% pullback that Alex Kruger said is that, sure, it'll be you know, a pullback. But even if it was that 35%, you know where that lands us? High 50s? Like, think about that. That's where you are. That's where that is. That's a huge number to be at. Do I think that we, we could have that kind of a pullback? I don't think so. I think there are too many you know, adoption moves that are going on right now. Small businesses, because of all, now here, just hear me out, just hear me out. Because of all of the layoffs, you have a lot of people that have, you know, side hustles that they're doing. Those side hustles, a lot of them are gonna turn into businesses. Those businesses are gonna take my class and actually think about, you know what? I can accept crypto the same way I can accept PayPal and credit cards. I'm gonna go do that. It's cheaper for me to, to accept crypto than it is to accept credit, card, credit cards. See, again, when you start hitting retail adoption, that's going to be big. As retail starts to become more educated, that's when you're gonna see things pick up. So I don't know that it's gonna be a 35% drop, but even if it was, you have too many things that are in the works right now that are just gonna go, yeah, yeah, but we'll drop a little bit and then we're gonna go right back up. Those transactions are gonna happen. People are gonna start realizing, holy smokes, I can only, it, it takes twice as much, having event, takes twice as much to get the same amount of Bitcoin. Crap. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. So as you have all these, you know, machines out there minting Bitcoin, you know, doing all the hash rates, all that good stuff to work in there, you know, technology magic, you sit there and you just go, that's great. Bitcoin is not for transacting. It's not for normal everyday transactions. What are the other chains that can do that? Cardano, Solana, Ethereum, uh, Matic. You have a ton of blockchains out there right now. Believe it or not, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash. Nobody likes it when I mention those names. But when you look at those numbers, I'm just saying, there's Litecoin up big time. All right, you have, you just have, as a matter of fact, let's go look at my list. All right, something I wanted to point out to you, dog with hat, why is it moving backwards and everybody else is moving forward? Dog with hat down 8%, just saying. Everybody else is within, is within my 5% that I'm paying attention to, everybody else. Then on the other side, you have, I don't know, uh, Pith Network, 20% upward mobility, uh, Floki up 18%. Let's see who else am I paying into? Theta Network up 17%. Um, let's see who else. Near Protocol, 14%. Gala, 11%. Let's see who else. Avalanche, Algorand. Algorand, a, a name that nobody pays attention to anymore. 8% upward mobility. Same thing for Avalanche and Chainlink. Litecoin, 7%. Zycoin, 6%. There are lots of coins out there, lots of projects out, out, out there that are making moves, making big, solid moves. Then, like I said, here's the Ethereum above. I'm sorry, Stitchy. Come here, boy. 
So you have Ethereum up above 4,000. Told you it was going to hit 4,000. I don't know why nobody was listening to me. Um, Bitcoin above 71,000. 71.6. I'm just saying, these are big numbers. These are really big numbers. You want to know what coin I actually slept on? The one I'm hover hovering over right now, BNB. I remember when BNB was way lower. It was half this, not that long ago. I have I don't know why, but I have the number 202 in my head. Wow, you really want your pets, don't you? Wow. I remember 202 not that long ago. It's at 523 right now. Holy moly. Is that a big deal? Yeah, because it's year to date is 67, just behind Bitcoin, which is behind Ethereum. Right? Solana, 46% move year to date, up at 148,000. I mean, $148, sorry, not 148,000. Um, XRP at 62 cents. Okay, not doing much. Only, year to date is only up, you know, 1.64%. That's a transaction coin. That's an institutional transaction across border, country to country big payment coin should be looking at XLM basically the same tech that's what I'd be looking at that's going to be your normal day to day when it you know compared to compared to XRP I hold a bag of XRP just because I think in the future it's going to mean something right now I don't think it means jack right um, Cardano big deal 74 cents I know you're all looking at me like I'm crazy how long ago was it that it was 50 cents below 50 cents, not that long ago. We're talking weeks, not months, not years. We're talking weeks. That's a big move. Now, year to date, yeah, that's only 25%. But where else have you been able to invest your money and get a return in the same number of days? Tell me, tell me, please. This is what I'm talking about. Doge up. 97% year to date. It's at 17.6. The next one, Shiba Inu up 229% year to date. Just these months through March, today, the 11th. Just saying, it's a market cap at 20,000. I mean, 20 million, 20 billion. God, I'm way off today. Jesus. So you have a lot of coins that are out there making big noise, really big noise. And again, when I look at these coins, I'm looking at what they do and how they do it. Shiba Inu, Doge, even Cardano, Solana, just because of their speed and everything that's out there and low gas fees, Algorand is another one, XLM is another one. They lend themselves to daily transactions. Somebody wrote to me and said, yeah, but those gas fees are crazy high for certain coins. And I said, yeah, but for other coins, they're not. So the daily transaction, you know, the fee is going to be low and the speed of which that transaction can happen is really fast. Boom. What people don't realize is we're already used to paying tax. So we'll pay tax and we'll pay, uh, pay the fee. It's not going to be that much more. And it takes the burden off of the actual store owner. They get the money that they're expecting to get. That's going to translate, you know, down the line, that's going to translate into lower product costs. It'll increase their profit. They'll go spend money. That cycle actually happens. And it happens at our level, at the retail level. Not all the way up here and everybody thinks it's going to trickle down. Ne that never trickles down. Never. Anyway, this is Eddie J on Crypto for GrowMyBag.tv. I hope you like what I'm doing. If you do, drop me a note. I love hearing from you. If you've got critiques on how I can do things better, drop me a note. I love hearing from you. I always want to improve. Anyway, I hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.